All right, this is for computer science, AS level 9618 for uh, Cambridge Computer Science. Uh, starting unit 5.1, the operating system. Let's take a look at the learning targets so we know why we're learning this. So the candidate should be able to explain why a computer system requires an operating system, which is what this whole thing is about. And explain the key management tasks carried out by the operating system. They want us to take a look at memory management, file management, security management, hardware management, which includes input, output, and peripherals and process management. So let's dive right in with starting with the operating system. Now, do all computers have an operating system? And remember, a computer really just stores a program. It stores something that a device should be able to do. Well, what about microwave ovens? Do they need an operating system? They do something. They're there to perform one task, heat incorporated with time. They don't need an operating system. An operating system would drive up the cost and really be unnecessary. Why do you need an operating system with an oven? You set the temperature, you set the time, and away it goes. Now, for devices that require an operating system, an operating system serves a variety of purposes, interact with the users in more complicated ways, and keep up with needs that change over time. An operating system is just a set of programs that are designed to run in the background on a computer system. It provides an environment where applications, which we call software, can be executed. So with operating systems, most operating systems have a large set of programs. Now, some of these programs are stored in the processor memory the entire time, but many of the subroutines that an operating system will use are stored on the hard drive and are accessed by the operating system when needed. By accessing the subroutines only when it is needed, saves memory for the processor, but also that the operating system can re be replaced if or when needed. For example, at the time of this recording, Windows 11 is coming out. We can upgrade from Windows 10 to 111 because it is stored on the hard drive. An operating system is a bridge, it is a go-between, it is a middleman between the hardware and the software. When you're using the keyboard, you are communicating with the operating system. You're not communi communicating with the hardware or the software, you're communicating with the operating system. And the operating system will translate the input of the hardware that can be used with the software. It doesn't matter how many programs you have, without an operating system, they are virtually useless. You're not gonna be able to use them. Now, where are the operating systems? Where are they stored? Most are stored on the hard drive and not the RAM, which is great because if they were on the RAM, remember, RAM is volatile. As Soon as we lose power, everything on the RAM, gone. So if they were stored on the RAM, as soon as you shut down or you lose power to the computer at one time, the operating system would be gone forever. That would be terrible. And the other reason is because most operating systems are large and they take up a lot of space. If you buy a new phone, say it has 512 gigs of memory or 256, you'll notice that some of the space is already being used. You don't have any pictures, you don't have anything. Well, that's being used by the operating system and the programs that come pre-installed. Now, it also allows for easy upgrading or changing from one system to another. And we just talked about upgrading to Windows 11 a second ago. All right, so user interface. So the operating system provides a user interface and it's needed so the user can get the software and hardware to do something useful. Now don't forget, the operating system we said is the go between the middleman for the hardware and the software. And an operating system should at least provide the following for user input and output. A command line interface, console. So if you're in my class, when we program using console, we're creating a command line interface. When we use Windows Form app, we're creating what's called a GUI a graphical user interface. And then we have the program hardware interface. So programmers like us, we write software and users run that software. And the, that software uses the hardware. The operating system is responsible to make sure the hardware acts the way the software wants it to. A programming language, and we're talking about a high level language like VB.net, Python, Java, etc., allows us to write a program without needing to know the details of the hardware and specifically the processor. We don't need to know how that works to write programs. The operating system has to provide the mechanism for the execution of the developed program, the software that we write. 
So resource management is one thing they wanted you to know. Once the execution has begun, we don't call it a program, we call it a process. A process is simply a program that has begun execution. So a program is a set of instructions. When it starts running, we call it a process, and that involves resource management. Now, in today's computers, a process, which is a program that has begun execution, will not be able to run without interruption. There are many processes running on the computer system at any given time. Right now, I'm running two processes. I'm running PowerPoint and a video recording software. Now, each of these processes need access to the resources provided by the computer system, mainly the primary memory. Now, the resource management provided by the operating system aims for efficiency which is optimum resource management. And there are two important aspects of this. There is scheduling of the processes and the resolution of conflicts when two processes require the same resource. This should be TWO, that is a typo on uh, my end. All right, so memory management uh, helps goes along with resource management. And there are three important aspects of memory management. Memory protection makes sure that one program does not try to use the same memory location as another program. When I load PowerPoint, it goes onto the RAM, specifically this PowerPoint presentation. When I run the video so software, the operating system is gonna make sure that what's currently being used, the RAM that's being used by PowerPoint doesn't get overwritten by the video recording software. The memory organization scheme is chosen to have optimum usage of a, lim of a limited memory size. An example of this is virtual memory. In other words, how do we get the most out of the memory available? And then memory usage optimization involves decisions about which process should be in the main memory at any one time and where they are stored in that memory. Now, the operating system does a great job of doing this, and it does it automatically, and here's an example. Here we have a bunch of processes. What, what's a process? It's a program that has begun execution. Program is just stored instructions. When you run it, we call it a process. Many different processes going on here, and the operating system has made sure that each of these processes do not overwrite something on the RAM that's being used by another process. So this really illustrates how well the computer can, uh, can do this. So all these processes are using a different part of the RAM and it's not because the user got lucky, the operating system has put each of these into a different part of the RAM to make sure not to overwrite something that is currently being used. All right, so device management. Every computer has a variety of components which we call devices. You may have looked at device manager under your Windows operating system. Keyboard, monitor, printer, webcam, anything that is uh, connected. And the management of these devices require a couple things. Installation of appropriate device driver software and then control of usage by the programs, which we call the processes. Now the device driver software is what's installed so the hardware can interact with the software. And then we have file management. And there are three major features for file management that is done by the operating system. The file naming conventions, it allows us to name files so we can pull something up. We don't have to do file one, two, three, four. We name it something meaningful. The directory, folder structures, we can create as many folders as we want to keep our stuff organized and access control mechanisms. You, you know, the operating system has directory folders, uh, these structures, use them. Um, some people's desktop looks like a bomb uh, went off and it just looks terrible. Use the directory structures, which are folders. Don't name files, you know, um, you know, presentation for Tuesday. Name it what it has to do with. Take advantage of what the operating system offers. Uh, this is a an example of what you should not do. Uh, you know, without file management, it would look like. And what I mean, what is this picture? The bloody room of requirement. I mean, look at this thing. What in the world is this? Who organizes things uh, like this? My wife would probably say I would, but even this is just you know insane uh, for me. Over here in the States, we have what's called the uh, IRS. If they have to come by your business and do an audit, I feel bad for whoever, who would ever have to go through these things. They would open up wherever this is stored, looks like a warehouse, and probably have a heart attack. Somebody at some point had to say, you know what, this is a bad idea, but they just kept piling things on. It looks like the room of requirement for, you know, how files are managed and stored. All right, let's move on to security and uh, get ready to wrap this thing up. 
Now, we will discuss details of security issues a little later in the upcoming video, uh, getting more in depth. But the operating system manages several aspects of security, including the provision for recovery when data is lost. We call this a system restore point. You deleted an item. You can actually restore your system to before that item was deleted. So when you delete an item and you're like, oh man, I really need it, just do a system restore. You install something, your program's not acting, or your computer's not acting the way it should. Do a system restore. You can actually uh, go back in time, if you will. Prevention of intrusion, uh, firewalls, people not being able to access your computer, and, you know, doing the best they can. And then the passwords, you enter a username and password when you get onto the computers. And then ensuring data privacy, encrypting those uh, files. So now error detection and recovery. Errors can happen when a program is executed. And this is, could be because it's badly written or inappropriate data has been supplied. For example, we write a program, we're looking for an integer, we enter a character or a string. That's inappropriate data. Now other errors happen because devices just don't work correctly. Whatever the reason, the operating system should have the capability to interrupt the running process and provide error diagnostics. Now, in extreme cases, the operating system needs to be able to shut down the system in an organized fashion without losing the data. And this can happen based if your battery is running low, if your internal components are heating up. Once it reaches a certain temperature, the operating system will actually shut down your computer in an organized fashion so you can recover the data, but also so the internal components components inside your computer do not uh, become damaged or melt. Some phones uh, do this as well, and phones have an operating system. So let's uh, summarize the operating systems, and let's get ready uh, to call it for this video. So we can summarize the operating system like this. Operating system is a software program which controls the operations of the computer system, and we looked at several different aspects. It provides a user interface for human-computer interaction. So this is HCI. It's not HCL. It's not not hydrogen chloride, it's human computer interaction. It controls how the computer responds to the user's uh, request. It controls how the hardware communicates with each other and with the software. And it provides an environment in which application software can be executed. So that's going to be it for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post one below. If you found this helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. We'll see you guys in the next video.